Hello. Good morning, everybody. Hello. Hello. Or good evening. Hello. For, for Gordon, I think it's evening. Yeah, it's evening for me. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, hey, it's Thursday. It's uh, the alternate week, so it's time for a workshop. And in today's workshop, we're going through um, Mac OS doc icons, how you can create those in Rive, and how you can implement those to actually work in the doc, not just, um, I don't know, in the editor. Um, so I think what we're going to do is start off by taking a look at the sort of doc icon app that uh, Zach and Gordon put together. And then we'll look at the files and then later we'll talk about implementation, some best practices, things like that. So Gordon, you want to get us uh, started with the app Rooney? I can do that. Yeah, that's a real word. Don't laugh. Look at us. <laughs> I was <not> laughing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it should be on screen. Looks great. Yep. Ooh. So I think there's like a, a few things that's worth highlighting. Uh, one is that obviously it's running in Mac OS, uh, which uh, uh, Zach can maybe talk about a bit more, but uh, the Mac OS runtime should be coming out soon. Uh, but uh, more importantly is the fact that uh, we have the animation running in the dock, as you can see. What? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm guessing all the designers will go into like how they mo made the Notion, Spotify, and uh, Wool, and I think this is my favorite, uh, the Slack animation. Yeah, it's amazing, cool. the Slack Very animation. Very good. Cool. Any questions uh, <laughs> about this? I w I am so curious how you how y'all got this up and running, but yeah. I'm sure y'all talk about that later. Yeah, we'll do the cut at the end. Yeah. Sweet. Okay. Sounds I'm good. Gonna stop sharing. All right. Well, who wants to go first? Who wants to look at their their cool design first here? I can start. Okay, JC is gonna start. Uh, we, we've got the world famous um, Cat Man. I don't know if he's actually world famous, but uh, might be. Okay. Okay, so this is was my idea. Is uh, thinking in a, a app about wool or cats or something like this. Um, yeah, I created the, the icon um, with the wool and the hand of the character. Um, here, um, uh, the idea is. Uh, I create this uh, rig. For example, uh, here I have this control uh, uh, where I can control all the hand. So I can move the hand around if I want to the arm appear for this way or the other. I can move like this. Uh, the other thing I have is oops, this uh, bone where I can move the hand like this for the animation. Um, and this control that is the control of the hand. So I can move the, the hand like this. And with this other control, this is interesting because with the same control, I can move uh, using the rotation, the fingers, or oops, I can move the, the nails like this. And all this is using uh, constraint. Uh, I connect uh, the different fingers with this control only the rotation. So when you move this rotation, the bond move the rotation. This is in uh, 100 and this is in negative. So move in, in opposite direction. And um, to animate this, uh, what you do is uh, move the hand like this, for example, here in this position. And in this moment, I can move this finger to this position. Yeah, and the other thing I need is only move the hand behind to the wall. And for that, I use here in this uh, bone that have the, the, the arm of the cat, uh, I move the, the right bit behind like this, the draw order behind. So now I can move the hand behind like this. This is the, the rig, it's not complicated. 
but help me to create animation. So here you can see that I have, let me set it here, the idle that only I key the uh, initial position. So nothing happened here. And then uh, when they are moved here, you can see, let me show the bonds. That happens what I what I show you. The hand is behind. Now it's in front of the wool. You can see how I'm moving the finger to from now there, and then it disappears. And then the hand moves in some position. And then when the arms exit, I key the final position of the, the other animation and then is go back like this. And here in this machine, I only use three states of this animation. And the input that is a Boolean, or when it's hover, the, the icon is when activate the animation. <clears throat> you see here the input. And I have here two. So, when I hover, this is what happened. If the thing I have here is that this animation uh, stop when you can see here when the animation complete. Okay, when the animation is complete. So when I hover, if I release the animation, finish. It's the only thing I have. Yeah, and that's it. This is. My idea, um, animation. That looks awesome. Yeah. So that's great. I only have one yeah. question. Um, is it really called like the little palm on the cat? Is that really a cat bean? What's like the technical word for that? Does anyone know? The what? The the the, 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 the little thing. Is it a cat yeah. bean? We call them pillows. Pillows? Um, well, that was oh, just that sounds right. No idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pillows sounds a lot more technical than bean, but uh, we'll go with that. We'll go with that. Pillow. <laughs> like almohada, almohadilla. Almohadilla. <laughs> yeah. So your um, your icon is set up to work on um, like a hover or a click, right? Like that's when that's when yeah, yours would go off. Yeah, mm. yeah. My, my idea in the beginning, my idea was okay. When I want to uh, run this this app, when I hover the icon, move, and this mm -hmm. is the fun thing, no? Cool. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Sweet. Who is the next tribute? I'll go. Yeah. Ah, Michael <laughs> volunteers as tribute. <laughs> okay, I'll go next. We'll save. We'll save Laura's awesome one for last. Yeah. All right. And I probably gotta make sure it's, it's sharing. Yeah, that's on. It's there. Yeah. Perfect. Yep. Yeah. yeah. We can do it if we work together. Um, <clears throat> all right. So I did. I chose the Notion icon um, because it's sitting on my dock all the time, and thought it would be a fun one to experiment with. Um, so I'll just go ahead and show you um, the animation here. So my thought was it'd be cool um, if the icon turned into like a little notepad because I think of Notion docs and writing notes and things like that. Um, it's a very superficial uh, interpretation of what Notion does, but um, I thought it would be kind of a nice little transition animation so that when you click the icon, it does this little transition. And while the uh, app is open, it will sit like this. And then once you close it, it would revert back to the original um, design. So it's pretty simple. Um, we'll just kind of take a look at the different um, animation timelines I have here. So this one is just the animate to the uh, notepad. And it's really, I'm not doing anything, anything too wild. Like a lot of it is just animating uh, vertices. So if I Jump in here. Um, so here you can see that I've just, I'm basically keying a lot of this. So 
Just king positions of the vertices. I, I could have set it up using bones, but I needed to kind of get things a bit more, I shouldn't say accurate. Well, yeah, kind of accurate. Like I wanted to be able to move the main box and then reposition everything. Um, so I'm sure there's a more like mathematical way I could have figured out how to rotate this, but this was just an easy way to get the movement somewhat correct. Um, and then pencil's kind of hacky, like it's just <laughs> scaling in, but it goes fast enough that it kind of, you don't see it unless you're scrubbing through it. Um, I could have probably made that like pop on a little bit more. Um, but then the one interesting uh, kind of technique that I know we've had questions about is like the, the white outline around the outside of it. So since we don't have a way to like add a stroke to an entire group or like a compound shape really without it outlining every shape. Um, I just duplicated. Um, so I took this box. So this box here, uh, this is the actual white stroke, but this one, yeah. Okay, so let's hide this. So I animated the, the main box first and then just duplicated it and then adjusted the stroke. So, so yeah. I did the same with the pencil, just duplicated the pencil animation and the same with these little, the binding loops, um, just duplicated them, brought them all the way to the back and then expanded that stroke so that it gives that outline. Um, so yeah, that's, that's it. Um, there's lots of vertex animations. Like I said, I'm, there's a cleaner way to do it. Um, I was just trying to get something uh, ready for the workshop. So, I'll probably go back and see if I can kind of adjust the actual rig itself. Um, Cause I know there's like, uh, I've done, I did a little demo where I made like a cube rotate. Um, so you could actually add like bones to each of these corners. Uh, whoops, don't do that. So if we come in here, um, let's find that front face. So I could have made a bone for this corner and then that could have that bone could have shared or this the vertex for the top here could have shared that bone and then i could have just animated those bones um, and it would carry these shapes with it so yeah that's probably the way i would go back and do it um, when i clean this up but yeah here it is mocked up in the dock in the not for real way which gordon showed but just the oops. Just a quick mock up to see if it would look look all right. And yeah, nice. See, so yeah, that's it. Yeah, it was fun. This is a really, really fun project. Looks great. It it looks really good, like in the dock. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know if it's because it's black and white, but like it it stands out. <laughs> yeah, and this is a good example of like uh, very subtle ways to use Rive in the dock. You probably don't want something that's super distracting, like I don't know, something just confetti all over the place. Uh, you know, every second. I don't know. That might be fun. <laughs> I don't know. But like, well, uh, uh, very, very usable, like, and and um, a really subtle way to just add yeah. these to the map. I agree. I want gaudy animations all over my screen <laughs> all the time. Like, I don't want to. I don't want my computer to be able to run because I want so many things animated at one time. That's me. <laughs> Well, with, with the release of Rive on uh, Mac OS, uh, I think the question now is like, what kind of dark icons or dark animations mm. the Rive app will have? Oh, that's actually a good question. That'd be yeah, cool. I feel like, it was like I mean, obviously it needs one. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because we can't be making these and not have one for our own app, you know? We can I have a like... seasonal one, like oh. spring is Ooh, coming. Oh, yeah. Mm. Just like petals like, open when you open Rive. Like what oh, Google does with like, Google search, like sometimes yes. something random. Yeah. I've got this I've got this idea for a little animated character. That no, never mind. I don't think that's a good idea. For a ride? <laughs> uh, you're talking about <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh no. Uh, See ya. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is this is su that's super inside joke. Uh, maybe one of these days um, he will make an appearance. It will make an appearance. <laughs> Who yes. knows? We'll see. 
uh, we have lots of good laughs with with that one. Um, no, uh, speaking of the the Google thing, not to proselytize um, the Last of Us anymore, but I did see on Twitter that when you search Last of Us, they had this little like it was either somebody faking it or Google actually implemented this thing where like. It's like a little plus button that comes up and you can make the mushrooms grow in on your desktop browser um, or on your, uh, your web browser. It was really cool. Oh. That would freak me out. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So next, let me, let me show mine and much like um, Michael, I did one that is always sitting on my, Oh, no, that's the wrong one. I think it's this. Is it? Oh, no, it's blank. What's going on? Oops. Uh, try this again. Bing, 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 bing. Um, okay, one second. For some reason, I probably don't have my permissions set up, of course. So we're gonna have to go through the browser. We just had the we just had the desktop app app release. So we <laughs> to use that. Oh. So that's a good question though for the comments. Like, I have people started using it. Uh, that desktop build. Yeah. Okay. No. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Okay. I got it. Okay. Yeah. So much like Michael, um, <laughs> I decided to use uh, uh, recreate an icon that I use all the time. I'm always listening to Spotify, whether it's music, podcast, whatever. Um, so what I've got is I wanted to set up an icon that would uh, play an animation while the app is actually loading. So we've got like a hover state for when the, you know, for when you're hovering it. This would be for when it's Ooh. loading. And then when it finishes loading, it'll go back to this. Um, you would probably not be hovering it while it's loading. But um, so for right now, the way I have this set up is really just for this little uh, demo that I had set up down here. But I could set this up to work with a loading percent. And I'll show you that in a second. And I'm not really doing anything uh, crazy as far as animation goes. Um, each line has a group and it's a single, uh, stroke. Well, it's actually two strokes. So I've got the main black line stroke here and I've got an additional stroke that grows and shrinks. So when it turns into the headphones in the, um, hover intro animation, not that one click intro this. So when it goes into the headphones, mm. the uh, stroke in the back grows so that you get a nice little rim light. So that would stick out in the dock. Um, because before I didn't have this little box around it to make it stand out. But now that the box is around, I don't actually think I need the, um, the rim light anymore. Looks cool. Yeah. I like the rim light. Um, so if I was going to set this up to work with load percentage, cause really, like I said, right now, all it's doing is, uh, it's playing through the click intro animation into the loading and into the loading idle, but I've got all of the animations there so that you could, um, you can, you can have that on loading thing. So what I would do is I would add a new input. So right now we're just using booleans and a trigger. I would just use a number and call it like load percent or whatever Zach wants me to name it. Um, I think this is acceptable. And <laughs> I would tie it in from this loading idle state into, or uh, yeah, yes, the loading into loading to idle, yeah. So load percent there and make sure that when we equal 100%, it would fire off 
this transition. So we would click it, we'd go in the intro, and then we'd just stay in this loading animation until our app finally loads up. And then it would transition back to the stationary position. Nice. So that's my icon. There's nothing too, too complex to talk about here. So I think we can look at Laura's, whose uh, icon is much crazier, has a very, very cool um, <laughs> animation. So let's check that one out next. OK. I, I'm sharing my screen here. Oh. It is there. Yeah, there. Well, oh, this is the sketches. Uh, my animation is all over the place. Uh, I went and did. Um, I'm gonna show. I use bones for the squares. And let me hide all this. So I have a, a, a set of bones for every color of the that it's moving. Yeah. Um, and it goes like this. I, I animated the scale on Y and the position. And then and then I went ahead and animate all those splashes. Uh, Key by key. Uh, so there's not much of a science there. I animated all the vertex, as you can see here. Um, there's this really cool feature that it's new, that you can key all the vertex uh, at once. Um, I started from there, and then I went one by one Yeah. for a couple of frames. Uh, I don't know if this is the best uh, solution. Maybe you can do this with bones and more organize it, but uh, it was, I was a little uh, last minute uh, trying to figure this out. See, there's some things that it won't show because the, the icon is so, so small that you won't see the, the trick. Um, but I basically did the animate the bones, uh, scale and and position, and then uh, added the, these uh, drops and the, the shapes frame by frame. And the other part is the, um, this, the logo, the actual logo. Um, and for that, I only animated the scale and the position too. So it does look okay. It, yeah. it works for this. If you go like and see it really closely, you can see that it's not so good. <laughs> you see, <laughs> um, but at this, um, you know, at this size, make the trick. Yeah. Um, for the state machine, it's super super simple. Uh, it's only um, on Boolean with a hover, um, a pointer enter, and, and a pointer um, exit. exit. And for the condition, uh, for the pointer exit, same as JC, I uh, had an exit time at 100%. So when you um, hover the animation finished and then then go back. Yeah. Um, yeah. So very I nice. Think that's for the little yeah. for the little dots, were you using trim path for that? No, but that's a good one. I should have done that. <laughs> yeah, I I I use little dots. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it, I could I... have done. <clears throat> There's nothing wrong with that. More efficient. Yeah. Yeah, I think it. I, I love that you use the like the key by key, like frame by frame for a bit. Like it adds that like handcrafted look to those splashes, which I think is fine. Like I think it looks great. So yeah, for I, the for the splash, I guess is 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 
good idea I use the, the keys because with the bonds, maybe you need to create that crazy rig to animate something like this. And the, uh, moving the vertex is, is more easy. And it's a small animation, so maybe you have uh, five, eight keys for, for this, so it's, you know, it's not crazy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, really great job, Laura. That's yeah. really Thanks. cool um, yeah. doc icon. One thing I noticed, uh, I messed up the sizes. So it should start from the actual size and then maybe go smaller to do the whole jump and then go back. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so it's yeah like... because you need more space for, for the splash and yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. It'd be cool if it jumped outside of the dock though, like if it was you know, I don't that... know if that's possible. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Gordon, Gordon Zach, is that possible? <laughs> TBD. <I don't> <laughs> it depends. It depends. <laughs> Like I've seen like some icons that are like really close to the edge of the dock. So I think, I think you have like some room if there's like you know there's like a padding area that you can kind of kind of get. Yeah. You you can maybe trick it to maybe do it, but I don't know. Maybe yeah, we'll need to test it. <laughs> yeah. Um. One thing I was wondering when you hook up the, when you do the magic, you do Zach and Gordon. Um. <laughs> Did you use the listeners for this, or it, it doesn't matter if we put or not a listener there? I think we it's. I think we might be able to. We we just need to confirm internally and maybe check out more runtime things there. But uh, for this app, we are doing things manually. Um, but yeah, okay. it's yeah, it's, it's a, a combination of question. kind of both. It's like yeah, yeah, it's like. For the demo on screen in the app, it's like the listener and then also triggering the dock icon animation to do the same one. What um, okay. what file sizes would you guys recommend us using when we're creating dock icons? Um, I'm guessing for vectors, if it's if it's just, just vectors, uh, I don't think it matters because um, I mean, it, it scales it down anyway. Um, if it's going to be just, if it's going to be images, um, uh, then I would say, uh, I don't know, I've, I've never Googled it. Uh, I guess we should probably Google best practice for what the size of a dock icon is, but um, I guess it also kind of depends on like how good of quality you want. Um, but yeah, I'm sure there's a, a standard for this that we can Google. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I think we do. I think we mostly use what five hundred by five hundred. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Square artboards. Um, yeah. So I guess make sure it's a square artboard, transparent yeah. background, unless you want to put a background on it, um, which you saw yeah. JC and I did that. Um, and yeah, I think from the design side, that's about. That's about it. Yeah. The other important thing was making sure that truly the the animation and design took up the entire space without mm -hmm. leaving much room for padding on the artboard because with the already small size of the dock icon, you don't want it to compress uh, um, with it maintaining the aspect ratio. So that's super tiny. So yeah, um, that's another one. All right. Well, I think we're going to hand it over to the wizards and... Um talk a little bit about the implementation process of these dock icons using our Mac OS runtime. I feel like you guys are the wizards, but uh, yeah, <laughs> <For Debatable. real. laughs> but yeah, this is the super fun parts, the code. Um, and uh, yeah, Zach and I are going to both discuss certain sections. Um, just a bit of a disclaimer, at least for me, uh, I am quite new to uh, SwiftUI, but um, essentially it's it's divided into two. Um, we have the actual uh, screen, like the display that's uh, demoing the animations, and then we have the dock icons part. So keep that in mind for this demo, 
but um, to begin, as you would normally do in as, uh, any Swift UI uh, application for Rive, you would load your Rive view model. Uh, here we give the different file names and the artboards for each of those. And again, these are just for like uh, simulating it on the screen. Um, and I think it would actually be good just to remind everyone. So this is the simulation on the uh, display or the application. And then it's also showing in the dock at the bottom there. And um, yeah, so uh, what's happening here is we created uh, is this wrapper uh, view, which is called tile. And here we're just passing in the actual animated uh, view. And this is kind of where the magic is happening. For this particular one, uh, we are doing a little bit of a hack. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to disregard this. This is for the Spotify one uh, for, uh, for you, Robert, uh, because we also allow it to be uh, clickable, which we didn't demo. But uh, the simple thing that we're doing is we're adding this on hover uh, effect. And within the hovering thing, Oh, within this callback, um, there's a few things that are happening. Uh, depending on whether this animation is already playing, we make sure that all of the other ones are stopped, and then we play the correct one. This would probably not be necessary if you had one uh, artboard or if you had one RIF file that you were showing in the doc. This is only necessary for this particular demo because we are switching be uh, between all of the different animations. and. Um, this is kind of where the magic is happening, is um, where we are calling the play on this doc icons app. And this is an area that, that Zach will talk a bit more about. Um, but yeah, uh, essentially, you have all the luxuries you normally would uh, calling the required inputs or uh, modifying the state machine as, as needed. Um, so yeah, that's the quick introduction. and. If we delve into this doc icons app, this is the uh, the main entry point. And as you can see, we have these um, static variables. So this just exposes it to the whole application, meaning you can call it from anywhere. And these are the classes that are doing the main uh, thing that you are seeing at the bottom here that's allowing the animations to play. And I'm just going to open a random one, uh, the Spotify one. And then Zach, uh, yeah, if you can give us an overview of what's happening on screen here. Yeah, so um, like Gordon mentioned, everything is kind of spawning. We have different um, Swift classes for the Spotify, the Notion, and yada, yada. Um, so just looking at the Spotify example, um, as you saw with what Gordon was looking at, you saw that um, we were implementing or we were instantiating a Rive view model, just passing in the file name and the artboard name. And normally, if you're building uh, an iOS or Mac OS application with the Rive runtime, um, that's normally how you'd use it. It's a very high-level API that, um, you know, given a few parameters, it does all the rendering for you. You don't have to worry about anything behind the scenes um, to, to draw anything on the UI or the view. Um, and so this is a little different. So with uh, the Mac OS, because we want to tap directly into um, basically how we render the uh, the Rive view on the dock, um, it basically we have to do a little bit more work to to try and get the dock to update. Um, so instead of just instantiating a Rive view model um, and saying, "Hey, dock icon, be the Rive view model," we have to extend the Rive view model so that we can get into the view. So here we're creating a new class called Spotify Doc Icon View Model. This is the thing that we set as that static variable in that main application. Um, and the reason we want to do this is because we need to get into the Rive view mechanics, which we'll go over in a second. But um, you can see in that Rive view model, we're just calling an init method, or we're uh, creating an init method, and we're uh, passing it the normal variables we normally would. So the file name is Spotify, and the artboard name is whatever that needs to be. Um, and the reason we're kind of overriding this is because behind the scenes, if you were just creating a normal Rive view model, if you're familiar with the, the Rive runtime and iOS APIs, um, it creates a view for you, um, a UI view. And in our case, we want to say, don't just create a, a standard UI, a Rive view for us. 
we need to create a custom right view. So we are creating, as you can see on line 20, this class Spotify doc icon view, which extends our right view. Um, and in here, uh, you can see there's a few different things happening. We have a few init methods that we're overriding, and we're mainly overriding them because we want to call this shared init function that you see on line 29. Technically, we don't really need to do that here, but just for demo purposes sake, we wanted to show that um, as you're instantiating your arrive view, um, you could also do things to the doc icon, such as create a layer if you wanted to dynamically have different colors behind the arrive view. Um, I know a few, I think every one of the examples we looked at had a transparent background as the artboard um, in, in most places. And so if you wanted to actually have something as a, a dynamic color that you have at your uh, Mac OS app, you could see the like on line 31, um, layer dot background color, you could set it as your own apps background color, whatever you need to be. There's a few different other properties you could play with here. Um, I'm sure Apple store guidelines will have uh, its own opinion for and, and strict guidelines for what you know, you need to have if you were to publish a Mac OS app with something like this. So um, your mileage, uh, your, your, what is that? phrase, your mileage may vary um, there. So anyway, just showing that you could do other things as you're instantiating your arrive view. Now, the reason we need to create a specific instance of arrive view is this advanced function you see on line 45 here. This advanced function is, again, happening behind the scenes if you're creating a arrive view model. Um, this is the function that gets called every time we draw a new frame of your arrive uh, instance on, onto the UI view. And so normally you don't have to worry about this. This is called every single frame and it does a bunch of things to basically just get things to render on the screen for you. Uh, we need to override it because if we were to put the arrive view model onto the dock, one thing about the Mac OS dock um, itself, the architecture is that it won't auto update itself. Um, it's, it's not on a, 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 a an animation loop per se, and it's not updating all the time. So what we need to do is we need to tell the doc, hey, update the doc icon with this new frame. And the best way to do that is by tapping into the, um, the animation loop itself for the Rive um, instance and telling it, hey, go update the doc every time we have a new frame in, in our animation loop and just update the doc uh, view to be itself or rather this rive view. And so you can see um, on line 46, we're calling uh, the super.advance, uh, basically the upstream rive views um, advanced stuff. So this is basically just doing everything that we're still doing behind the scenes that you don't need to worry about. But the, the main crux of it is on um, line 52 to 54. And we'll ignore this if statement for a second. On line 52, what we're getting is the nsapp.com doc tile. So this is just Mac OS. This is SwiftUI's um, API convention for getting the doc tile reference itself. Um, the next line is setting the content view equal to self. So we're just saying, hey, replace whatever this is. I think it's just a, a regular white icon with self. So we're going to replace it with a Rive view. And then the next line, dot display, is actually flushing that UI to the doc itself. So those three lines are really the crux of what replaces that doc icon with Rive um, animations. And uh, we have this all wrapped around in an if statement. You can see we kind of have this time since tile draw delta. That delta parameter for this function is basically like a, um, the time since the last draw. And so uh, we have it wrapped in this if statement, basically forcing it to be about 60 frames per second, which helps with better performance, especially if you know your monitor has a higher refresh rate, uh, refresh rate, or there are other rives being drawn in the main body of the app, which we actually do. So this is just a a, a performance guard here. But yeah, every time um, this rive file, or every time this this rive animation is going through its uh, animation loop, every frame, every frame we're saying, hey. Um, Mac OS doc replace itself with this new frame, and it just continuously continuously does this in a loop. Um, so really, this is this is uh, the magic of how we get that doc icon to to work. Um, and of course, you know you can do this with any other 
um, asset, but this is how you could do it with Rive. You're you're basically just extending Rive a little bit so that you can tell you can tap into this advanced function of the Rive view to be like, hey, replace the doc icon with itself. Um, so yeah, it, it's um, it's a little bit more code than how you would normally instantiate Rive in in a macOS or iOS application, but it's not as uh, complex as uh, you might think to to do that. So yeah. yeah and um, it, it probably should be consistent in the sense of like you can just copy paste this and and replace this yeah. and it should work. Exactly, and yeah, we do this for every other class basically: uh, the Notion, the Slack, the the Wool one as well. Um, something I can add on top of Delta if uh, people aren't familiar. So that this is commonly called Delta time, and um, that's the time between the previous frame and the current frame. And if the time is uh, really small, then it means that the previous frame was called not long ago. And 0 0.0167 is basically 1 divided by 60. And that's what Zach mentioned by targeting 60 frames per second. Um, yeah. I haven't looked to see if there's any questions yet. We have questions, but I, I, I also have a question. Um, Shoot. This is one of those, uh, I want to make big, broad, sweeping promises without actually knowing. Um, what are all the things that you think we can get away with um, working with these, these doc icons? Like, what are some more situations aside from just clicking to open the app or um, things like that that you think we could get away with? That's a good question because technically you can get away with anything because the the triggers for these animations are happening in code within the app. So it's not like well, only when you open it, it can be any condition. Um, it can be manually triggered or it can be conditional on some events happening in the application. Um, uh, how Zach set up this code is, uh, as Zach mentioned, all of these are essentially the same. Will icon, Slack icon. Um, here in the main uh, app entry point, um, you can just call the static variable for this and trigger any animation at any point uh, of time. So you can do anything. <laughs> yeah. I think once we have the Mac OS runtime out, we'll show a few more examples of things that you could do with the Mac OS runtime. Um, for example, if you have a state machine set up to uh, track a cursor, uh, with state machine inputs like an X and Y input uh, number input, um, you know you could use uh, Swift UI mechanics and, and APIs to to uh, get the current cursor position and manipulate your state machine, set the inputs wherever you need in your app. Um, and beyond that, we'll also have some examples of like how you can actually not even just use arrive in the dock icon, but also the status bar up top. Um, and, and create some awesome animations there. It's of course a lot tinier of real estate, um, but you know uh, some cool stuff to be done there. Sweet. Well, let's get through these questions. And I actually I have a bonus icon. Um, Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Didn't tell you about that one, did I? <laughs> no, it's actually an old one. I just I just remembered that I had it. Um, okay, so here we go. From the top, is that available on Mac M1? I don't know if he means the desktop app or the Mac OS runtime, but I would assume yes. Both? Sure, yes. are they both? Yes. Yes, yep. Yep, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I know I use the desktop app on an M1, and uh, yeah, you, you guys made this on M1s, right? Yep, yeah, Sweet. we did. So answer is yes. Uh, we got a couple people excited for the Windows version of the desktop app. Agreed. Agreed. Yes. <laughs> uh, okay. Would it be possible to live stream the whole process from concept to design to animation? Yes, we actually do that on Wednesdays. Uh, sometimes we skip. Well, I think we mostly skip like the concepting phase because that could take a lot of time. And I don't think anybody... I don't know. Maybe somebody does want to watch me uh, or any of us sketch around for a while until we figure something out. I don't know. how long. So how long does it take you all to usually get an idea together? Usually do you use Photoshop, sketch around a little bit, and 
and then go and arrive or, or, or what do y'all do? It depends. Yes, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Maybe it could be a live stream, but I think that more than one hour. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, it needs to be something very simple because the wool animation I did, for example, is one morning to create the idea and, and create all the the rig, the animation, the thing machine, check out uh, everything is working. So yeah, with something very simple, maybe we can do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, to, to, I guess to the question is, um... oh, sorry. Oof. You guys ever have squirrel brain where you start talking and then you forget what you were saying? <laughs> That's me all the time. Um, but to the question, Yes, we, we do. We stream that stuff on Wednesday. Um, we, yeah. we typically get rid of the idea process and usually start with like the artwork, rig, animation. Um, like Zach said, sometimes your mileage may vary depending on who's doing the stream and how complex the deal is. Um, so check out those Wednesday streams. All right, next question. Can we convert a .rive file to a GIF or a looping video file? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Cloud yeah. renderer. Yeah, you need to use the cloud render and you can render in GIF. Mm. I think you can set up the GIFs to be looping, right? I'm not sure now. I believe you can set the GIFs, but yeah. not the video. I think the the video is just a one shot, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. One thing. One, shot, yeah. one thing to know is that um, it'll render timeline animations. It won't take like a state machine that has layered animations yeah. and render all those. So it has to be you have to pick a an animation to render out. So. Yeah. All right. That's it for questions. Um, Ivan says he's got a website that he animated stuff um, in Rive Ooh. and implemented. Nice. So uh, yeah, share that with us on Twitter or Discord. Um, and anybody, if, if you're creating stuff and you want us to see it, we have a share your work channel that we check all the time. Share it on there, tag us on Twitter. Yeah. Um, and we'll check it out. Okay, are y'all ready for bonus icon? Oh, you, you, bonus oh, yes. icon. Let's see it. Bonus track. And it's scared. <laughs> yeah, this is, sounds like a setup. What? Wait a, minute. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> a lot of the time, I'm joking around. Uh, no joke this time. This is this is truly bonus content. Only only for the folks who who hang around for the full thing. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So this is an old one that I did a while oh. back. I never shared this one. I think I put it on the community a while nice. back. Um, but this nice. is a way, this is a different way that you could use um, a doc icon. Um, and in this case, let's say you have, I don't know, a um, an application that zips files or uh, I use one all the time called a GIF Fox. When I want to convert a video file to a GIF, I can drag my video on there. Um, and all it really does is it gives me a little circle loading bar and i know that there's you know there's the folks out there who are like oh that's great you know that's great ux it's just a, it's just a circular loading thing uh, i don't want to get distracted by by crazy animations well guess what i do so i made this icon <laughs> so that i could be distracted while i'm waiting on the thing to convert so what i've got is um let me just show you this so we've got this it would just sit in your doc icon and you could drag your file to it and it would drop the file into the truck and then our truck would drive until we get to loading percent 100. It could be, um, it could be conversion percent, anything like that. Um, and it could just sit right there on the dock icon and boop, work. I'm sure that there would be some uh, code magic that needed to get done on uh, Zach and Gordon's side for like stuff, I'm sure. Um, but I'm guessing this is one of those things that, uh, like I was asking about before, this is something that we could totally do, right? Yeah, yeah. 100%. Yeah, like it's, I wouldn't say we can do it right now because uh, I don't know how familiar Zach is with SwiftUI, but um, I mean, nope. in theory, it's really easy. <laughs> yeah. 
we could we could fake a loader that just like waits five seconds and then just incrementally yeah. updates that local percent Ooh, true. give you the illusion of loading i like the illusion of choice yeah. um i like illusions of all kinds i'm actually big into magic you know i do uh i do a little close-up magic is this the plug for your your magic yeah. <laughs> side business <laughs> i can't yeah <laughs> I don't actually do magic. Yeah, I was gonna say this is a classic Robert joke here. Actually, actually, I do have a magic. Piece. Look, <laughs> see this pencil? It's, it's, it's actually made out of rubber. Oh my god! Oh. So I, I was thinking that because we can do whatever, no, mm -hmm. In, with this icon, maybe can be the a possibility that uh, we create a cool icon that is more interesting than the app. So I can open the app to play with the icon. Sure. <laughs> that seems like the most meta um, meta thing to do ever. You make the most boring app ever just so that you can make the coolest yeah. icon yeah. ever. This is a good one. Yeah. <laughs> we yeah. might have to try that. Like, what would be a super boring app that you could make? I don't know. Do you want to talk about super boring app or super fun? No, no, no. I, we got to nail out. We got to nail down the super boring app first. Like a like a cookie clicker kind of equivalent. What's a cookie clicker? You know, no, no, that? because I like that. I like. Yeah, that <laughs> sounds great for JC. No maybe boring. maybe simple, not boring. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. Oh, I got it. Okay, so the the app is. Um, you ever heard uh, the, the saying, I'd rather watch grass grow than do X thing? So it's just a grass growing grass app grow. where like, yeah, it'll pull up like a picture of grass that actually never grows because it's just a picture. Um, so now we've got the app. What do we do for the icon? That would be cool. A game, a mini game. Oh, like a lawnmower? <laughs> <laughs> like you can cut the grass with that. I don't know. <laughs> It's I actually have a good idea for, for well, I, technically this is kind of a boring app. Uh, weather app is boring, but the dog icon can have like a sun yeah. or like a cloud or rain, snow. Or Jim Cantor. Uh, the, the, do you know who that is, Gordon? No. Do you, does, does anybody else not? Does everybody know who this is? No, it's okay. All right. So for those of you who live in southern states, you probably know this guy. This dude is the hurricane guy. So when there's a hurricane anywhere in the country, he goes out there and he's he's like the guy who um, who started the hurricane stance where they're like leaning into the wind and like, oh, my gosh, the wind is so heavy. It's getting crazy out here. Anyways, Jim Cantor. <laughs> Another plug. Another. Yeah. <laughs> Another plug for Jim. Well, this one's just for Jim Cantor. All right. Uh, another question. I tried creating NFTs similar to the po possessed by creating each trait like eyes, nose, animations, and different artboards, and exporting animation frames as layers. Mm -hmm. I might have should have read that question first. Um, does anybody know what an NF? Oh, NFT. I think he means yeah. like the yeah, skinning. Yeah. yeah, like skinning different artboards together with maybe. Hmm. Uh, I think you'd want to probably put those all on one artboard, right? Like all the nested artboards, you stick them on a main yeah. artboard to make to make the main thing. I would think. That reminds me, before we plan, before the doc icon workshop, we were actually talking about doing something mm. like that. Mm. Yeah. So maybe. That will be something we can show off in a couple of weeks or whatever. I think we're waiting on um, a particular feature, though. I think that's when we're actually going to do that. Um, here, I'll type it in. I'll type it in this the the back room. Um, <laughs> I think that's what we're waiting yeah, on. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, okay, so there's more to the question. Uh, so the NFTs tried to export animation frames as layers. The problem is when I try to combine all the, I guess, artboards programmatically, the quality is not good. 
and the sizes are very large. Yeah, I think that's why you have to put them all onto one um, artboard, I believe, for now. Well, for the sizes that are really large, that could also just be like if you're using a lot of images, mm -hmm. uh, then yeah. that, that will definitely have a big impact if you're not like optimizing the images. Yeah, we have we have um, compression settings that you can use on your images. Uh, is there a way to programmatically do that without losing quality? Mm -hmm. So he means taking pieces of the artboard and combining other artboards of it, or I'm not sure. This may this may be a Discord question, maybe like a little video or something try and help us see what you're looking at because if i had to guess it's totally possible but i'm sure it depends on something all right well we'll see if we i guess do you want to hang out for another four minutes and uh wait for another question or yeah all right. So what are we going to do in the next workshop? I guess while we're sitting here, <laughs> let's just talk about that. What does everybody else want to see? You know, if you're here, let us know what you want to see, but uh, I think we have ideas, right? Yep. Like, um, which one we're going to do like pull to refresh or what, what are we, what are we going to do next time? Well, there's the one thing that I don't think we're talking about publicly yet, but oh, put it on the put it on the the, the back room. Put it in the back. Oh, room. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we got a tease that we have a private chat that that nobody else can see. Makes makes you feel exclusive. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah 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 yeah. That's that's dependent potentially. Yeah, we'll see about that one. Yes. The thing is, we can we can speak about. Ah, yeah. uh, we are we are hardcore teasing right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, it, it, okay. I'm all right. I'm not teasing, but all I'm going to say is like, if if we can actually, if if it all comes together, um, it's going to be really exciting. It's going to be super awesome. Yeah. Um, amazing. Um, I need other <laughs> descriptive words. Uh, incredible. Mind blowing. <laughs> Mind blowing. Um, yeah. Oh, I see this one a lot. Delightful. Um, what else? Fabulous. What else we got? Fabulous. Yes. It's going to be all of those. Um, but Timeless. We'll, we'll have to see. Oh, my Ooh. God. Oh, so what? Oh. what? Oh. <laughs> now that's a good one. Yeah, we definitely want to wa watch our social channels for for yeah. an update on what we're going to be doing. Yeah. 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 Um, also, I, I, I'm sure it was already mentioned, but just in case it wasn't, the the code projects for this, uh, or the project code for this uh, workshop app, we'll, we'll be sure to post it publicly. We need to refactor it a bit once our, our Mac OS runtime makes it to Swift Package Manager and all the other uh, distributed um, platforms and stuff. Um, but that should be coming out very, very soon here. Um, and so yeah, you can go through the app, and I'm sure we'll be able to post our stuff on the community as well. Yep, we'll make sure we get all the um, the icons posted up so that you can see them. I'm sure they'll be on the the featured page later today. So, all right. Well, I think that's about it for today. Good job, everybody, and uh, thanks for joining us. Um, I saw a lot of new faces today, so um, be sure to check back in with us on Tuesday when we do our live live stream. Um, just in case you don't know, that's where we do all of our um, reviews from the previous week. We talk about new features coming up. We talk about the streaming schedule for that week. Um, so that's when we'll be back. We'll see you on Tuesday. So bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. bye.